private or state of sector. It's not enough to follow the publicly traded companies. You need to keep up with the biggest privately held ones. Take Inspire Brands. That's the restaurant company that owns a bunch of household names. You know them all. Buffalo Wild Wings, Andy's, Dunkin' Donuts, Sonic, Jimmy John's, Baskin Robbins, among others. These guys have more than, get this, 32,600 locations across 57 global markets, making Inspire one of the largest players in the space. On top of that, there's been speculation that they might be thinking about coming public later this year or in 2025. Give me some. But even if it stays private, you know what? We can learn a great deal about this industry from this phenomenal outfit. So let's check in with Paul Brown. He's the co-founder and CEO of Inspire Brands to get a better read on the restaurant business. Mr. Brown, welcome to Mad Money. It's great to be here, Jim. All right. Well, as a restaurateur, I have to tell you, you inspire me. You have created something in six years. In six years, and it all works. How did you get the idea? How did you get these particular businesses? And tell us, you're number one in everything. Yeah, Inspire Brands is a global restaurant platform with obviously six distinct brands and 32,000 restaurants. Uh, what makes us different is that we are tightly integrated. Our brands are tightly integrated around a set of shared capabilities. So each brand can benefit from the investments in those capabilities from the other. It looks more like a model that you might be familiar with in the, in the hotel sector than it does in restaurants. Your background, yeah. Hilton. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you something that's amazing. I always thought that Duncan was a pretty good run, but I used to see... There were so many areas in the country that didn't have Duncan. I lived in Boston for a long time. They had tons of Duncans, but they just never seemed to want to do anything. What have you done with that change since you took it over? Dun Duncan is absolutely on fire. It's incredible. Average unit volumes are up 30% since we acquired the brand. I wish people brand. knew how, how hard it is to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of work has gone into it. Part of it is we've replaced all of the coffee equipment and beverage equipment across the brands. The franchisees have made some great investments. It's allowed us to actually build up the iced business. In fact, we're selling more iced beverages than we are. Well, you coffee. invented them. We, we did invent it. Uh, a franchisee in Rhode Island about 30 years ago got the bright idea of pulling pouring coffee over ice, and everybody liked it, and so we went with it. Well, it's remarkable. Now, there's some that I think people don't realize. Uh, drive-in turned out to be the way everyone, you know, you got the Chipotle drive yeah. You pioneer drive-ins with Sonic, and it's still working. Well, what attracted us to Sonic is we felt that brand was perfectly set up for order ahead. It already has right. the ability to order ahead and bring the food out to you. And of course, we didn't know that COVID was going to come along, and it actually exploded right. during that time. Uh, but it's actually been a great business. It's 27% order ahead sales, up 25% year over year in order ahead sales. So it's just a phenomenal concept set up for, for digital technology. Now, people might say, wait a second, almost 33,000 restaurants, that you're tapped out. But you were putting out projections that would indicate that you're nowhere near tapped out in any of these great brands. Yeah, that's a great thing about having a portfolio. We see white space at least 2x in the United States. 2x. 2x if you look at the white space, just given where we are. And you, even Duncan, as many as we have, they're still fairly concentrated in this part of the country. I know you just opened 10, 000, your 10,000 store overseas, right? I just, in Netherlands, I find what you're doing is really rather remarkable. Do you ever get home? Are you in the how, you live in Atlanta, I guess, so you get to, get to go home occasionally, right? We have a lot, but it's really all about building the relationships with great licensees yes. and bringing one of our brands to a licensee that may have had another brand. And it's really helping us build that portfolio. Yeah, it sounds like there's great synergy in terms of knowing how to operate. Absolutely. Now, one of the things I'm most impressed about, I've been a big Wingstop backer, I admit. I like Wingstop. I happen to love Buffalo. And you have got the BWW Go, including one in Philly, where I think that we could use an additional. How is that going to work, the takeout? Well, we have over a million dollar takeout business in all of yeah. our sports bars today. And, and it's just a great takeout and delivery product. And so we said there's just an opportunity to create a format dedicated to takeout delivery, 800 square feet to 1,100 square feet. Let's just take this concept into places that you couldn't put a sports bar. And we just see a huge amount of growth in that. We'll have 160 open by the end of the year. Our third one opening in Manhattan in a few weeks. In April, you're going to have one in Philadelphia. Uh, and so we, we have 100, 500 commitments plus from franchisees to build those restaurants, and we've only been franchising it for 18 months. That's incredible. That is so fast. I know there's lines. You really got the word out. Now, I, don't, I do want to get, I'm not going to overlook Sonic and BR, but I have to tell you that I was, when I was not doing as well as I am now, candidly, and I'm very blessed and lucky, Arby's was my go-to. But then I started thinking that Arby's had lost its way. But you're starting to think about maybe a plan to make it so people r realize how it's been reinvented under you? Yeah, Arby's has terrific food, uh, and it's a really exciting brand. We think there's opportunities for people to try more of that food. So we have something coming uh, later this year that will give people an opportunity to really try Arby's in a way that they haven't before, and I'm sure they're going to absolutely love it.
Okay, now we uh, we have. I mean, I can't leave uh, JJ. I got to do Jimmy John, uh, but uh, Baskin Robbins, seventy seven hundred of those. I mean, these are incredible numbers that you're putting up, and there really is more room for ice cream. There's really more room for sandwiches. Absolutely. Uh, outside the United States, uh, Baskin Robbins, two thirds of the businesses outside the United States. We have almost a thousand Baskin Robbins in India. Uh, we're going to cross that mark uh, in a few months. You know, thank you, Evans. You said something in an interview that was so terrific. You said, you know, we don't want to be in China so much. We want to be in a growth market, yes. India. So you're not hostage to the thinking that has just enthralled so many Americans for so long. That's not working. You have to go into China the right way. We have no exposure to China, but we love India and we love so many of the other markets. We love Latin America. Just right. such huge growth opportunities in those markets. All right, so let me ask you about the health of the consumer in two different ways. Is the consumer spending, health of the consumer, GLP-1, what are you thinking? Well, we see about 75% of Americans every year in one of our restaurants, <laughs> given the breadth of our brands. And so we, we, we do see the nation, right. and we have been pleasantly surprised about the resiliency. There are differences based upon income level, but that's the beautiful thing about having a broad, diverse brand with multiple price points and multiple occasions. And these uh, weight loss drugs, I mean... Yeah, they're just a factor, right? I and mean, people want to have a good meal, and they want to go where they are, and they're going to eat it no matter what. We haven't seen any impact. We're just focused on having great, craveable food at the right price. Well, you have done it. I want to congratulate you. There are business people I meet, and I am just incredibly impressed, and one of them is you, sir. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you very much. Okay, that is Paul Brown, co-founder and CEO of Inspire Brands. There are some fantastic articles about him and his company. And if you ever want to be an entrepreneur and really own something, this may be a great place to not get started because it's a little harder than that. But certainly have one. Man, money's back in. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.